All right, here we are with lesson 11.2, which is where we're talking about areas of trapezoids, rhombi, which is the plural of rhombus, and kites. And now, we are really just dealing with two formulas, as we'll explain in a second. We have the area of a trapezoid formula, one half the sum of the bases times the height, base one plus base two. We want to basically find the average base times the height. That's how we're doing that. The area of a rhombus then uses this formula, and we'll look at kind of why this formula exists a little bit in class, but right now this is the formula you need to use. Half of diagonal one times diagonal two. We use the diagonals of a rhombus to calculate area this way. Same thing for kites, half of diagonal one times diagonal two. And again, we'll look at why those exist that way later on in class, but for right now, it's really important that you just are able to use these formulas, and so I'm giving you them to use on these examples. All right, and remember rhombus and kite are really the same formula. All right, so let's try example one. Now this is an example where I'm gonna help you set this up, but for the most part you should be able to do these calculations then you can check your answer. So we're gonna go through example one pretty quickly. Remember that the area formula for this shape, this is a trapezoid, is this formula. So I want you to go ahead and write it in again just so we get better practiced at actually remembering what that is, so we want to write it every time we use it, at least in the notes. And then we can start filling these in. Now, these two parallel sides of a trapezoid are called the bases, so base 1 can be your 25 feet, and base 2 can be your 30 feet. It really doesn't matter which one's which. You could flip those because you're just adding them so the order does not matter. And then the height is your 11 feet. And so all we have to do is plug this in, and use our standard order of operations by adding these first, then dividing by 2, then multiplying by 11 to get our answer. I'll let you guys go ahead and try that in your calculator and see what we get. Alright, if you need any more time, just pause. Otherwise, this is the answer we should get for our area of this uh, trapezoidal pool. 302.5 square feet. Alright, let's move on to example 2. In example two, there's part of this that actually needs to be included in the diagram, but they did not include, and that's our right angle here. We need to know that that is a right angle in order to do this problem, otherwise it becomes very difficult. But we do have a right angle here, and so Miguel is designing a deck shaped like this trapezoid. Find the area of the deck, and this might be important if he needs to know how many square feet of, uh, of boards to cover the deck, or square feet of... Um, uh, if he's looking to paint it or stain it, he would need to know those measurements. And so here's how we're going to start this. If you look at this, there's one key piece of information that we need to know before we can actually plug this in. We know the height is 4, since that's a right angle, we could say that side's the height. We know base 1 is 9, we need to know base 2. And so before we go on, we have to find a way to calculate that. Well, here's what I want you to recognize. If this is a right angle, I could come over here to this side of base 2 and draw another altitude or height that's perpendicular to that side, which is 4 feet. And that separates this into a rectangle and a triangle. Now, this could be a square, but we don't want to assume that. We want to actually find out what this measurement is from here to here and then subtract that from 9 to find out what these parts are, because these would be congruent segments here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is find this part of our triangle using these and the Pythagorean theorem. So this part, we can call it x squared plus the other leg. Make sure you understand that this other leg is the 4 feet squared equals the hypotenuse. 5 squared. And so we should be able to solve that. And we get that x is 3. That means this portion of that base is 3. If the whole thing is 9, 9 minus 3 is 6. Since these sides are congruent, our second base is 6 feet. 
Now that is not our final answer. That is just the missing piece of information so that we can find our final answer. Let me highlight these key parts for you. We know the height, we know base 1, and now we know base 2. Those are the things that we're going to plug into our area formula for trapezoids. Like so. Okay, and again, if you want to just do these step by step on your paper, these calculations you can probably do in your head, or you can plug them into your calculator. Either way, we should get this as our answer. 30 square feet. So quickly review, just in case you're a little lost, the first thing we did was find our second base by using our Pythagorean theorem to find this unknown part, and we just subtracted that from the full 9 feet to find that missing piece. So that's 6 feet, which is base 2. So I add the bases, multiply by the height, and divide by 2, and we get 30 square feet. All right, the next problem, Ramon is, is carpeting, sorry, a room shaped like the trapezoid shown below. Find the area of the carpet needed. This is very similar to what we just did. So I'm going to help you set this up, but then give you time to pause the video and try and find these, uh, this calculation on your own. So once again, we have a trapezoid. We know the height of the trapezoid is 8 feet. We know base 1 is 14 feet. We need to know base 2 to be able to move on. Now if you remember what we just did, we started by recognizing that I can make this vertical line, which is also 8 feet because it's the height of your trapezoid, and that creates a right triangle where I can find this unknown piece. And if I can find that part of 14, we take it out of 14 to find this part, which is the same as base 2. So the first thing to do is use Pythagorean theorem to find x. going to let you work that out, pause the video to see what that should be, and click play when you're ready. Alright, this is how we would find x. x squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared means that x squared plus 64 equals 100, and if I subtract 64 from both sides, we get x squared equals 36, and then I just took the square root of both sides to get x is 6. Alright, since x is 6, b 2, or this part, remember these are congruent segments, so that part is 14 minus 6. Okay, 14 minus 6 is 8. So base 2 equals 8 feet. And so that actually works out to be a perfect square this time, but we didn't know that until we worked this out. So that is the part that we need to use to find our area. Remember, area equals 1 half base 1 plus base 2 all times the height. So I want you guys to plug in base 1, base 2, and height, and solve for the area, and check your answer when you're ready. Okay, if you need more time, pause the video. Otherwise, this is the answer we should get for the area of this trapezoid-shaped room. 88 square feet. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking that maybe there's a different way to find area rather than using your trapezoid formula. If you'll notice, every time we use a trapezoid, we can split that trapezoid up into at least a rectangle and one triangle, maybe two triangles. Okay, if I wanted to split this up into two triangles and a rectangle, I could. But in this case, to do this problem, we would still need to know that measurement. So you're still going to have to use that part to find that. And then if you wanted to find the area of the rectangle, you could add that to the area of the triangle and you would get the same value. So there's more than one right way to do this, but we're just focusing in this lesson on using these correct formulas. Alright, now we can move on to talking about kites and rhombi. And so here is what we have. We have a kite where one diagonal measures 12 feet and the other diagonal measures 7 feet. Remember that our formula for the area of kites and rhombi is one half the product of the diagonals, diagonal one times diagonal two. So that's what we're going to use in these examples. And these first few are just simply plugging in the numbers that we have. Okay, our diagonal one equals seven feet, our diagonal two equals twelve feet. Alright, so we can just plug those in. Area is one half of seven times twelve. And when you do that with your calculator, that gives you half of 84, 
which is 42 square feet. So for example 5 we can do that in a very similar fashion except for the fact that the way this is drawn, it is a rhombus but it uses the same formula. Okay, Rhombus and kite use the same formula. They give you that half of one diagonal is 9, half the other one is 7, but remember that in a rhombus diagonals bisect each other. So if this is 9, so is this, and if this is 7, so is this. So diagonal 1, if I'm going to pick a diagonal to start with, I'm going to call it this longer one, is 9 plus 9, or 9 times 2, if you want to think of it that way, which is 18 inches. And diagonal 2 is 7 plus 7, or 7 times 2, which is 14 inches. So diagonal 1 and diagonal 2 are those measurements. So we're going to do our area formula like this. 1 half of 18 times 14. Which gives us an area of 126 square inches. Alright, let's see if we can apply this information a little bit differently here. We are given this rhombus. It does tell you that it's a rhombus. And we want to find the lengths of the diagonals when we are given the area. We know that the area is 64 this time. Since we're dealing with a rhombus, we are using this area formula, 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. And we want to find the lengths of those diagonals. And it seems like we're just not given enough information, but here's what they tell you. It says one diagonal of a rhombus is half as long as the other diagonal. So what we can do is we can relate diagonal 1 to diagonal 2 by saying diagonal 1 is half of diagonal 2. So anytime I have to use diagonal 1, I can replace it with that expression. So in my area formula, instead of 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2, I can replace that first diagonal 1 with this value, 1 half of diagonal 2 then I still multiply by the other diagonal 2 in the formula. But I know the given area is 64. So I can replace area with the value of 64. Okay, so we have this formula, all we have to do is simplify it. And here's the first step in simplifying it. 64 equals 1 half times 1 half diagonal 2 times diagonal 2. But the 1 half times 1 half is actually 1 fourth. And diagonal 2 times diagonal 2 is diagonal 2 squared. So we just have to solve for diagonal 2. And here's how we should do that. We're going to cancel out the 1 fourth by multiplying both sides by 4. And 64 times 4, then, is 256. And on this side, we only have diagonal 2 squared. And to undo diagonal 2 squared, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So the diagonal 2 is the square root of 256, which is 16. So diagonal 2 is 16, and it said that diagonal 1 was half of diagonal 2, so I'm just going to go back up here, and diagonal 1 is then 1 half of the length of diagonal 2, which is 16. Half of 16, then, is 8. And these are measured in, the area was measured in square inches, so our diagonals are measured in inches. Diagonal 1 is 8 inches, diagonal 2 is 16 inches. Now, you could have these flipped. Depending on how you do the problem, you could have actually had those switched. Either way, it'll still work out with these two numbers for your diagonals. All right, we've got just, um, just a little bit of time left and not enough time to go through these examples, so we will talk about examples 7 and 8 in class. All right, that concludes this video.